I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with Jess, and, and I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm basically right now trying to pick up my passport, and you have no idea how difficult it is to do that in Venezuela. Uh, so I've been coming and going, and somebody's taking me to another place. So um, basically, I see two paths, and one of the paths is basically uh, how governments um, introduce, I mean, get this, get, get this technology to do stuff. Um, one of the main things is besides the the economic part is identity. Um, because identity is how they offer us services. And it's basically how they keep me in the country and I kind of travel and stuff like that. So one of the things is basically how we um, manage everything through identity. And there's been a couple of experiments in, in, the, in, Latin, in the Latin American region and a couple of those in, in Venezuela actually of getting um, a, a special jurisdiction to go like full blockchain with people with digital IDs, with people uh, using some cryptos as legal tender and stuff like that. Um, so they are calling me, sorry. Uh, so that is one pathway, but thinking about the governments and how they operate, it seems pretty much like, you know, very slow. Um, just the other pathway that I seen that, that I think is very interesting is thinking about like, uh, how do small communities organize themselves uh, to be self-sustainable? So yeah. how do they organize themselves to the level that they can be so well organized that they can connect to other communities and basically connect their economies and exchange mostly services than goods. But that, that is one of the other pathways that may sound more idealist, more anarchist, I don't know. But it's certainly something that thinking about the, the blockers in, in, the, in, in the legal realm, but it certainly seems like a, these two pathways are going to continue advancing. Um, basically, in, in the realm of governments, ID and CBDC are going to be the, you know, the flag bearers that are coming together. But um, we we must see these other experiments like come together. So, how, which is the um, which is the the basic toolkit for these communities to implement uh, blockchain solutions locally, so they can be interoperable with other communities and start like forming this decentralized network globally of people that share like the same values and have like a minimum basis uh, in terms of the technology they use. I think that is that is the ideal me and the one that is wishful thinking those kinds of things is that's the path that I that I wish to see uh, besides the government path. And there are of course many experiments in the small nations, nation states like uh, island nation states. And there, I had a friend try, trying to run a DAO in Estonia or something like that. So these kinds of experiments are going to keep happening in the private sector. And yeah, that's my take. I had to go try and pick up thank my passport. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel, for, for joining us, even if